Let's go to Peter Ducey at the White House. Guys? Good morning. We knew the money was coming from somewhere, right? The matching tents, the professionally printed signs, all the supplies. Well, now we know that they were at least in part indirectly paid for by some of America's wealthiest liberal families. Politico did an investigation. Part of it says President Joe Biden has been dogged for months by pro-Palestinian protesters calling him Genocide Joe. Man, oh man, Peter Ducey needs to just join a baseball team already because in the world of journalism, this dude's batting a thousand. Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate you guys stopping by. And you know, when I first heard about these protests, I was wondering, huh, somebody has to be funding these. There's no way that these people are just out, coming from nowhere. They go to camp college campuses that they don't even attend. They're going places that they're not even from. Huh, I wonder, and wouldn't you know it? Peter Ducey and his great journalism, he just exposed it all. In this video right here, we get to break down who does what, who's funding what, and I'm pretty sure you guys already know, but let's watch the video and I'll show you. Check this out. Some of the groups behind the demonstrations received financial backing from philanthropists pushing hard for his re-election. The donors include some of the biggest names in Democratic circles, Gates, Soros, Rockefeller, and Pritzker, according to a Politico analysis. The Gates Foundation says that their donations to these groups are not active. They have stopped, but not George Soros. You see, in December, 300,000. November, 350,000. September, 250,000. Susan Pritzker, October, 3,300. Nicholas Pritzker, November, 3,300. David Rockefeller, in September, 10,000. That would be donations to uh, the Biden, that is a list of Biden campaign donors uh, who are funding some of these groups that are behind the anti-Israel college protests. Oh, did you guys hear some of those names? Gates, Rockefeller, Soros? I mean, who would have thought it, right? This seems just like, B like BLM all over again. Come to think of it, this is exactly what we're doing, right? George Soros is funding both Biden and the pro-Palestine protesters while we're funding both Israel and Gaza. It doesn't make sense. This is such confliction. Except it's a completely different thing. Here's the weirdest thing to me, though, right? These are all Democratic donors. All, the Democratic Party right now is pro-funding Israel, right? These people are pro-Palestine. This is causing so much confliction, and this is what they want. This is what George Soros wants. That he wants us to conflict with each other for our economy and our people to crumble. We all know what it is. But check this out. Listen to what the Democrats have to say. Some Democrats in Congress uh, say that they are eager to vote in favor of a House bill that adopts the Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism as law. I was one of the, the, the co-leaders, uh, sponsors of that bill, so I'm, of course I'm going to vote yes on that. And I think it's, it's a very valid concern that really allowed that, that uh, I mean, that's an overwhelming uh, vote, a bipartisan vote in the House as well. I, I think uh, it's, it's, it's a great bill, and I look forward to voting for it. So it appears that some wealthy donors are playing both sides of this election campaign giving to President Biden's re-election effort, while also giving to some of the groups that are supporting these protesters who are seen as hurting President Biden's re-election effort. Of course they're going to all sign off on it. Why wouldn't they? They want this to keep going on. And of course George Soros is going to fund both sides of it. This is what he wants. He wants it to keep going on. This is confliction. Controversy creates cash. If there's one thing that somebody named Eric Bischoff taught me, that's it. It is controversy creates cash. This is crazy to me. I don't understand this. If somebody else can give me some logic into why this is going on, let me know. I mean, I do get it, you know, because like I said, they just want to cause, create chaos in our country. But what is the purpose of the politicians wanting it? 
that's what I don't understand. This is their country. They live here. They're supposed to want to take care of it. College protests, they continue to grow, as does the police response and arrests on these protests. As they grow, so does the tab for the taxpayer. It is up to the city to pay for the police response on these university campuses. But some lawmakers are now saying that the universities, especially the private ones, should pay the bill. Mayor Eric Adams here in New York City saying late last week that at a minimum, it should be shared with private schools like Columbia. Take a listen. We believe that they too should contribute to the course. And one way to prevent the course from escalating is to have a zero tolerance. As soon as that tent goes up, it comes, it comes down. Do not allow this to continue to expand. Hey, I'm sorry. This is a prime example of giving a Democrat exactly what they asked for. They wanted this. They made their bed. Now they need to lay in it. I don't want to hear it no more from these Democrats. Stop voting for it if this isn't what you want. This is all chaos, destruction, and evilness, right? And to think that the taxpayers deserve to pay for this, you are out of your mind. They do not deserve this. None of us deserve this. The university should be paying for this. They are allowing this, right? And Eric Adams is getting what he deserves. He asks for these things. This is the type of stuff that he supports. If you want to support this evilness and this ignorance, then by all means, go right ahead. But don't cry about it when it's brought to your doorstep. This is just like the same thing with the illegal immigrants when they decided to ship them to sanctuary cities. Don't call yourself a sanctuary city. Stop telling people to come here and stop crying about it when it's brought to your doorstep. If this is what you support, you get what you ask for. They asked New York City and the NYPD what they thought about it. This is what they had to say. Let's check it out. We asked New York City and the NYPD how much these efforts have cost them. City Hall telling Fox Business it's too early to know, but it has definitely increased overtime for the police department. And it will continue to cost them overtime because Columbia has reportedly asked the city to keep a police presence near campus through commencement, which is May 15th. That is why a bipartisan group of lawmakers here in New York City called the Common Sense Caucus is calling on the school to pay, saying in a letter to the elite university, quote, the turmoil on Columbia's campus is entirely of your university's own making. Going on to say, Columbia created this mess and Columbia, not New Yorkers, should pay to clean it up. Hey, while I 1000% agree with that, I'm not going to lie and act like they don't get what they deserve because these people are getting exactly what they deserve. These campuses are getting exactly what they deserve. They are all far pro left progressive liberal campuses. The city is far left progressive. It doesn't make sense to cry about it. Why do you want a police presence now? You didn't want a police presence then. Oh, now now you need the police? No, why don't you just take care of it yourself like you tell everybody else to? Why don't you call your peace officers and call your guidance counselors in to come give these people some guidance? No, you need police because that's what's needed in this country. It's crazy to me, though, right, how these Democrats, they're, they're begging, basically begging for police to use overtime like they deserve it. No, you should just allow these people to protest and hey, you get what you deserve. You wanted it, you got it. Here you go. The craziest thing, guys, is this isn't just happened in New York. This is literally happening in all around the country. Check this out. Since April 18th, there have been over 2,399 protesters arrested on 52 college campuses across 27 states. Talk about a widespread problem. But as we've mentioned in multiple reports, there's a lot of federal money that goes to these private schools. On average, we're talking about billions of dollars, close to $1 billion per year in federal funding that goes to these elite universities. Well, hey, there you go. You found the problem. Cut the federal funding, you'll force the schools to want to do better. I mean, it's actually that simple, right? We're kind of like the George Soros. The federal funding is like the George Soros right now, what he's doing. Cut the federal funding, you cut the problem. Well, all right, everybody, that's going to wrap it up on this video. I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Also, if you haven't yet, please make sure to hit that like, hit that share, hit the subscribe, smash the notification. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.